everybody, and welcome back to Coffee Break, the show where we break down interesting topics all within the time it takes you to enjoy a few cups of coffee. As always, my name is Clifford Swartz, and today I am joined by a very special guest, the foremost in the world expert on <laughs> microchip <laughs> compilers, uh, Joe Jaswicki. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing great, Clifford. It's great to be here with you this morning. It's great to have you here. And so Joe's going to talk to us all about how not all compilers are created equally. But before we dive into that, as always, I'm going to throw it over to Michael Pierce in the booth, and he's going to tell all of you wonderful people how to participate. How are you doing, Michael? Good. Thank you, Clifford. So uh, welcome again. We're going to have a great show today. Um, so please share and like this uh, presentation, this um, show, the videos on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, also, uh, please submit your questions in the, in the chats, and we will try and answer them after. Uh, if we can't get to you, during the show, please email us at livestream at microchip.com. Normally, I go back to Clifford, but look, I've known Joe much longer. I've known him for 10 years here at Microchip. So, hey, Joe, I want to hear from you. Same, absolutely. Yeah, great. So, Clifford, you know, besides loving your work here at Microchip, right? what else do you do? For fun, right? For fun, there. yeah. So, like you mentioned, my first and favorite thing is working for Wayne Freeman, friend of the show here at Microchip. <laughs> But uh, when I'm not doing that, I like to play guitar. Um, I do that on my best days when I'm home, relaxing, stuff yeah. like that. Sounds great. And when you're at home playing music, do you look for the cheapest or free? No, the Those best. free guitars. Do you go to Goodwill for your guitar? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, so tools, right? Tools are the most important thing to get us there. Yeah, tools are important everywhere. I mean... Look at look at our friend here. He's got his Strat. He's right. he's happening. He's got uh, his biodynamic headphones. He's got his AT2020. He's got his gear together. Right. And why do you do that? You want to have the best gear that you have because you're trying to get something done. You right? want the best product, the most affordable situation, and you want to be free to actually produce, right? You want yeah. to be able to be creative. And that's what we accomplish with the MPLAB XC compilers, is that we have a great professional tool, but then we also uh, offer that same tool, the same DMA, DNA, the same code in a free compiler, right. which is really exceptional. Cool. So do you mind diving in a little bit deeper on what makes the MPLAB X uh, compiler so special? Oh, it would be my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, you know, it's microchip, microchip's compiler, microchip's microcontrollers. Right. Who could know it better than we do? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we work with the architects from the time that the, the new devices are just an idea in somebody's head, lay out the instruction sets, and make sure that the compiler is going to generate excellent code for you. Right. You know, we have a great programmer's model. All of the registers are defined. You know, all of the different characteristics that make our microcontroller so excellent are also reflected in the compiler. So that programmer's model is there. Even in the free compiler, and this is really astounding to me, we offer all the way up to minus 02, uh, the, the optimizations up to O2, which is the best balance of speed and size. Right. It's my favorite optimization. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing that really sets the MPLAB XC compilers apart is the fact that we have fabulous support. Absolutely. Fabulous support. You know, all joking aside, I might be the, the foremost, because I'm here, <laughs> expert in the compilers, but uh, we have a fabulous team, an unbelievable team all around the world. Right. The sun never sets on the MPLAB XC compiler. I team. like that. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys are unbelievable experts. I mean, PhDs, people with 20, 30 years of embedded compiler development experience. Right. And if the support needs that level of, of expertise, we provide an escalation path internally all the way up to the development teams and we will help all of our clients with those difficulties that require that level of expertise. Absolutely. Fabulous, fabulous stuff. So we're really here to remove obstacles for you guys, right? And with easy access to, quite frankly, the best in the world team for this sort of uh, development, uh, you really can't go wrong. 
And so in a situation where there are no bugs, right, everything works beautifully, uh, that's what we really want, that's what we're aiming for, but we know that isn't the case. Yeah. What happens when there is a bug? Well, when there is a bug, you know, that support system really kicks in. We've right. got fabulous forums where our clients help other clients. We've got support.microchip.com where you can log in and log a concern that you might have. And then we've got a team. I, I can't tell you the depth of the team. It's really fabulous, the amount of support that we have. Um, and all of these folks, some of them have been, you know, with microchip as long as Michael Pierce has. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so they have worked with the development team for a long, long time and have great, great background. And a lot of the things can be uh, fixed in the early stages. Now, when you get to the really difficult parts, yeah. um, it's hard to tell, really, where the problem lies. Is right. it the compiler? Is it something in your code? And that team, all the way up to the development team, will help you identify what's going on. You know, I've, I've got the definition of frustration up there. You know, when you're stuck and you don't know how to go, who are you going to call? The MPLAB XC team. Right. <laughs> We've got that plasma cannon or something. <laughs> we're ready. We're ready for the bugs. We're, we're ready for the bugs. You know, um, there are other free compilers in the world. But those compilers are largely open source compilers. And the fun part of developing a compiler is playing with the compiler. Mm -hmm. It's not doing the support. Right. The microchip team is dedicated to your success, to the success of our clients. And we see that as an incredible opportunity for ourselves. We learn every time. Sometimes I'm I'm sad to call it that I am doing the support because I learn so much from our clients and so does the whole team and we love to talk to people and we love to knock down those barriers like Absolutely. you said and move forward. Cool. So tools are so important in like every aspect of life, not only in work but at home. You always want an easier experience, right? Do you mind going over again what makes everything so easy, so special? Absolutely. Thanks. So, you know, in music, certainly, right. you know, and I know a, a lot of our clients and a lot of software engineers are musicians as well. You want to get the best tools that you can. You want to end frustration. Frustration doesn't help anybody. Uh, you know, I have enough sources of frustration in my life already. Same. I don't need more. So I want to have a great tool that I can really rely on and really rely on some great support for that. And like it says up on the screen, microchip.com slash MPLABXC. Check it out. Download it for free. Yeah. Um, use it. Love it. Go forth. Be fruitful and <laughs> multiply. multiply. <laughs> um, so as you guys saw on screen, we have microchip.com slash MPLABXC. That link is going to be in the description, in the comments, and everything else that we have talked about and we'll talk about. We'll make sure to get you guys the links. But at this point, I'd like to thank Joe for the presentation really quick. Uh -huh. Thank you, Clifford. It's great to be here. And I think we're ready to grill you on some questions. Michael, what do we have for Joe? <laughs> Got to unmute myself. <laughs> You're good. St Don't worry. St standard sort of practice these days, I hear. Right, right. So, um, so you have, we, <laughs> we have a question from Ashish. Uh, you talked a lot about support. Uh, where do I go to get this compiler support? Okay. There's a lot of different places to go for support. Um, for big clients, if you're a big client, you, you'll have a great relationship already with your embedded solutions engineer. Right. Um, the forums, forums.microchip.com is a place where clients help clients. Um, the teams do patrol that, but we want to keep the you know, community kind of aspect to that. So we let each other um, support each other, right. which is great. Micro, microchip's a community. And then finally, um, if you can't find some place, some, uh, answer your question through that, you go to support.microchip.com, open up a ticket. Um, it's really easy. There's a knowledge base there. You can look through the knowledge base. A lot of the things that we've already faced with clients right. uh, is, are all taken care of and answered there. Sometimes you can help yourself. 
But if it's something that needs further resolution, there's actually three layers of support. Nice. Uh, terminating in the, in the compiler team, and the buck definitely stops there. Like I said, these guys are incredible. Absolutely. What else you got? Uh, so we have one that just came in from Fabian. A little bit off topic, but uh, he's, he's asking, please, could you explain a bit of the functional safety compilers? For sure. Functional safety compilers, absolutely. I'm thrilled to talk to you about functional safety compilers. Functional safety is something that's coming into various um, disciplines mm -hmm. uh, that our clients uh, engage in. Um, automotive is the, the clear, easy example. And functional safety is a discipline that um, uh, makes sure that there's no single source cause of failure in a, in a system. Right. And in order to count on that, you need to have all of the tools that you're using, all of the libraries that you're using, uh, everything that you use to create your product that are certified or that you classify and qualify yourself mm -hmm. to make sure that the, that tool is safe to use in a functional safety environment. Right. Um, you know, big Daimler, Audi, you know, GM, Ford, all, all of those companies are requiring this now going forward. And um, the MPLAB XC compilers are uh, certified up to ACIL-D for ISO 26262. Uh, they're available for purchase on Microchip Direct. Um, they come with an extensive documentation package uh, since we use uh, TÜV SUD in Germany for certifying our compilers, they've gone through that whole documentation package and that name carries a lot of weight in the functional safety arena. So you'll be able to present that documentation package to whoever you're using for a functional safety auditor and they'll see that you've really done your homework and, mm -hmm. and taken functional safety seriously which is what functional safety is all about. Absolutely. Okay, we have another one. All right. From nice. uh, Samuel on LinkedIn. Uh, what additional features are in the full XC32 compiler as opposed to the free one? Additional optimizations. Mm -hmm. So um, when we have uh, a situation where a client is going to make hundreds of thousands or millions of units. Um, crushing that down into the next smaller device is something that makes economic sense. Absolutely. You know, the compilers are really very inexpensive compared to the other uh, commercial offerings of compilers in the world. And if you can get that code size down to the next smaller device, it will make some amount of difference in the cost, and that difference in the cost translates to more profit for our clients, mm -hmm. which is great. We want our clients to be wildly successful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I tell my team that I'm, I'd be glad to offer jobs to people from competitors right. <laughs> when we put them out of business. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, the optimizations uh, are the minus OS optimization, which is Katie bar the doors, get, get it to me as small as possible. Right. The O3 optimization, which is make it as fast as possible. I don't care about code size, I need speed. Hmm. Uh, when we're doing motor control algorithms and uh, switching power supplies, digital power supplies, uh, O3 comes into uh, play because you want your control loop to be as fast as possible. Um, the compilers also have a optimization called procedural abstraction, which identifies common sets of code in different places, smashes them together, and then calls that okay. like yeah. a function. So it, it creates subroutines on the fly. Mm -hmm. So those are the optimizations that the pro compiler has. 
Uh, of course, the Pro Compiler also has a line jump pass like at Disneyland where <laughs> you go right to the front of the support queue. Uh, if you're paying for that, you probably have an embedded solutions engineer and our embedded solutions engineers are phenomenal Top as notch. well. Top notch guys, you know, and they can get you through a lot of difficulties that, you know, just crop up in the, you know, embedded development is not easy. No. I'm not telling anybody out in, in the audience anything new. Um, so when something goes wrong, having a strong partner in your silicon vendor, in your tools vendor, uh, Microchip is a one-stop shop for almost everything. Yeah. And it's really great. I spent a lot of my career doing embedded development and having different vendors giving you different things and it's always this guy's problem <laughs> or that guy's problem. Microchip wants to stop that. Absolutely. The buck stops here and we get the problem solved. I dig it. What else you got, Michael? Okay, so we have a slightly off topic, but still on topic from Hassan. Um, which static analyst tools are great for MPLAB compiler and GNU GCC? Uh, static analysis tools are, are really an amazing development recently. So, um, you know, way back in, in, in the old days, there was a thing called Lint, and Lint w is the granddaddy of all static analysis tools. Uh, there's a whole bunch of good ones. LDRA makes a great tool. Um, um, Coverity makes a great tool. Clockworks makes a great tool. Um, there's open source tools, Clang Tidy, uh, Clang uh, Static Analysis. Uh, there's CPP Check. As a matter of fact, the MPLAB X release that's going to be published on the website in the next day or two actually incorporates CPP Check to do checking against the MISRA rule set. Let's see if I can remember. Motory, <laughs> Motor Industry Safety, our association. Good. I, <laughs> I got four out of five. Um, but the MISRA rules are 143 rules that just really increase the determinism of the operation of your code. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a key part of functional safety and something that I recommend highly. Uh, we have a functional safety manual back to the functional safety question, functional safety manual with our functional safety compiler, and we strongly recommend using not only one tool, right. but two tools um, to cross-check because mm -hmm. you want to be sure. You want to make sure that your code is going to operate properly. Absolutely. What else, Mr. Pierce? Uh, still coming in. Good. Just searching through them. I respect it. So, uh, from Jared, uh, regards to the XC compilers, they're based on GCC, so where is the incentive to switch from AVR ARM GCC to the XC Pro compiler if support and or specific certifications aren't a hard requirement? For sure. Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> yes, they are based on the GCC compiler, but um, the GCC compiler, like I said, it, the fun part of GCC is playing with a compiler and contributing to a compiler. It's not fixing bugs, it's not support. Right. So the first thing is the XC8 compiler that's based on AVR GCC for, for that particular example has gone through, Deja GNU is the <laughs> test suite that the GCC compilers go through. Our test suite is uh, many, many, many times more stringent and run on our devices. So there are fewer bugs. Uh, a AVR GCC, uh, Hassan, for, for specifics, um, when you have const data, um, because AVR GCC doesn't bother to address that const data in program memory space, it wastes all that program memory space and then copies everything into RAM in embedded microcontrollers, RAM is a very scarce resource. Mm -hmm. So it wastes all of that RAM. In the XC8 AVR compiler, we address um, const data in flash and don't copy it into RAM. So you can use the RAM for your own 
uh, means. Whatever else you need. Yeah, we test the bejesus out of it. You know, um, we've been developing compiler test suites now for over 22 years. Wow. And we don't ever throw away tests. We're kind of kind of like a hoarder in that. In a good way, though. In, in, a, good in a good way. We 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 have nearly a million tests that we run on every release of every compiler, wow. and so it's squeaky clean by right. the time it's the it real gets deal. out to the. It's the real deal. You know, it's it's like a, you know a Strat or a, or a loud top of the line folk guitar top right. of the line, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got, Michael? So I, I think that's a bit about it for now. Cool. Um, if there is anyone out there that has more questions, please email us at livestream at microchip.com. Absolutely. So, so if we're out of questions, uh, if it's okay with everybody, I'm going to tell a joke, and I'm going to dedicate this to Kurt, our cameraman back there. Uh, Joe, why are kids and coffee beans alike? Hi. Uh, they're always grounded. Oh. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, at this point, I'd like to thank you again. <laughs> thank you for being such a good sport. Uh, you are a wealth of knowledge, and it's been a joy having you here. Thanks. It's been my pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, thank you to everybody in front of the camera, behind the camera. It takes a whole team to get this stuff going. Um, and thank you to the viewers, because without you, the show really wouldn't be happening. So thank you for asking questions. Thank you for calling in with like actual subjects that you want to hear us talk about. In two weeks, we'll be doing another coffee break. Um, that will be the final of season two, but we always have more in store for you guys if you want to listen. Uh, I'll be talking with Johan Lofstad, a coworker and good friend of mine, and we'll be going in a IoT AWS journey with all of you. And so I hope to see you there. Stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. See you. <laughs>